and, and which is in conjunction with Jonathan Barron, who is uh, also still at Google. Um, so the motivation is that we would like to do um, scene-aware image processing on mobile devices, on cell phones, uh, but we'd like it to be robust and not rely only on um, features that are able to be extracted just from the RGB image, and so we want to use um, depth images to aid in improving the robustness of this problem. Uh, there's other devices that are available now that um, have the same approach. So you can see like on the left the HTC One Mate, which has a uh, regular um, high resolution camera, which it takes the regular RGB photo, and then they use a second smaller camera, which is fixed focus, and then do um, use that for creating a low resolution depth image. Um, our goal is to actually have a higher quality depth image by using two matched sensors, so two high quality sensors, high resolution, both autofocus, both coming up with a nice image, uh, and then doing efficient dense stereo, um, which is some previous work of uh, John Barron's. Uh, in order to do this, though, we need, in order to do this efficiently, we need pixel accurate rectification on high resolution images. So the images that we take from these cameras are 13 megapixel, 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels, and we need to make sure that when they're rectified, uh, matching, image, ma matching scene points are um, aligned uh, at that resolution. And furthermore, we'd like minimal offline calibration because of manufacturing limitations. So um, the challenges in stereo calibration are well understood in general. Um, manufacturing tolerance, obviously, and then long-term drift over the life of a cell phone, two years. Uh, you might drop it or, you know, thermal expansion. Um, but then there's other things that are a little bit surprising, especially in an autofocus assembly. Uh, lens tilts and shifts occur for every shot as the lens is refocused. Um, and then also with two sensors being autofocused independently, you'll have focus inconsistencies between them. And also, even from shot to shot, focus inconsistencies. So, since the offline calibration problem is very hard, maybe we should just do online, fully blind calibration. So here's a fairly simple scene. Those are my socks. Got a left and right image. They're mostly aligned, but if you were to look at them um, very close up, you'd see that there is actually um, alignment errors at this resolution, at top, at the, the maximum resolution. So we use standard open CV feature detection uh, and matching using Rantac, so we get a robust set of inliers. And this isn't the best set of features, but it's a pretty good set of features. And then we use open CV's fundamental matrix estimation, and it completely fails. Um, and it's known that. Fundamental matrix estimation fails in some predictable ways because of the shear ambiguity. Um, but in general, even aside from the shear ambiguity, we were getting bad results consistently for a wide variety of different types of scenes. Um, so an obvious uh, next step then is to use um, bundle adjustment to get a, a better estimate. Um, and that actually makes it worse for a lot of scenes as well. And in, in general, this was for the variety of types of scenes that we were trying for just scenes that we were taking with cell phones. Um, you know, these algorithms worked pretty well most of the time, but there was a large number of scenes where it was not an acceptable result. Um, so we were trying, we had to try and find a way to do some combination of online and offline in order to uh, make this more robust, and so our result here, um, if you actually zoom in on the gear on this, you can see that the epipolar lines that you find here are actually slightly offset from one another, and that's the correction in this case. Um, so for the offline component, we actually take a single photo of a planar target, which is this target, um, so not a checkerboard, but still a set of dots. Um, and from this information, we do uh, an offline calibration that uses um, just that planar information to get sort of as much information as it can. Uh, we, um, we optimize for the, um, the rectification error, which is the, dig, um, the delta squared term on the left there. Um, and we, we estimate basically the, the stereo configuration between the two cameras, but we're not able to estimate the uh, intrinsic parameters for both cameras simultaneously, so we only estimate for one of them. And then online, we get new features from whatever the scene is, so with no information about what the contents of the scene are. Uh, and we redo the rectification optimization, um, this time allowing all of the parameters to, uh, to vary. And uh, if you come by the poster, I'll be happy to tell you about the results of our synthetic experiments, um, in which we use a bunch of different types of scenes and different types of made-up data. And then I uh, can show you high-resolution images where you can confirm for yourself the um, improved quality of the uh, rectification that we're able to achieve. Thank you. Come to our poster, C7.